Giftpreneur, episode four, the ultimate giftpreneur, Jesus Christ himself. So today I want to take a second right now when it's fresh, just got a fresh revelation for the most part for myself in regards to how to link this giftpreneur concept to the creator himself, Jesus Christ. And so uh, what better way to really break down the concepts of your gift, making room for you and the combination of your using your gift and then the preneur or entrepreneurship nature behind it, putting it all together for the ultimate package towards you being able to fulfill your destiny, i.e. God's given plan for your life and also which is interconnected with your dream. So I want to dive right into it. And so this morning I um Got before the Lord and my first question was, you know, Lord, what do you want to reveal through me today? And so the whole idea of this podcast is not to become, you know, preacher Mike, but it's more so just to share stuff as it's put on my heart. And especially if it's things that really excites me and this message or this uh, these ideas that I'm going to share today really, really excites me because I think it's timely. This is very timely information. And I think if I can extract it from our user manual i.e. the bible and put it in terms that people can understand and show you how we are no we are not much different than the creator himself in regards to um him having walked the journey that we're walking now and how he implemented and strategized and became very successful with his life's mission or his life's work so all the words i'm using and emphasizing i've mentioned in prior podcast so i would encourage you to go back and listen to those so you get a better understanding where this is all going so each podcast for me is going to be building upon the next one in a sense so giftpreneur and so i i figured right now is the best time to just lay this and so jesus christ himself was the ultimate giftpreneur and so i think he personifies exactly what the giftpreneur concept is and what it was designed to be and, and how I received just the very ideas of trying to put it together originated with him. And I'm very appreciative and very grateful for this. So uh, let me know how, what your, your, your thoughts on this. Leave a comment down below and uh, we definitely got to you know work on this. So this is just once again, just something fresh that I thought I would share right now. So give manure. What exactly am I talking about? And so as, as I've mentioned over the last couple of episodes, it's that idea that each and every one of us is born with a specific purpose that is to accomplish a piece of the big puzzle of the big plan and so ultimately for those that are believers the you know the bible itself lays it out directly as to what god intention was mankind was given dominion in the garden it was forfeited due to man's rebellious nature and given over the right to dominion to the enemy and therefore, up until that time frame, there was no everything that God did from Genesis all the way to the book of Matthews and everything in between was all designed to reestablish God's chosen creation, mankind, human, Adam and Eve, Adam, back to their rightful lordship on this planet. And so God, Jesus Christ himself, was very successful with that. And so his his ultimate life mission. And coming to earth as a human to encounter everything that we encounter and to leave us clues as to how we're supposed to navigate this life. And it all, it's all built upon the very concept of faith. And so just the idea and its word is very clear. If you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you shall be saved or shall receive uh, salvation. Therefore, faith to me. As a believer, it sounds simple, but obviously when it comes to the bigger picture of life, faith these days in reference to just acknowledging, confessing, believing and striving to live according to some instructions is very difficult for a lot of people. Therefore, I can understand how in the Bible, God says, will he even find faith when he returns? And so we, we you know, we, there's a lot of things that occurs between now and then, but Jesus Christ himself is the ultimate giftpreneur because he laid a great example that I'm about to lay out for you guys right now. And so it simply boils down to the fact that, as I mentioned, based upon the scripture 
of uh, Ecclesiastes where it talks about sow your seed in the morning and don't let your hands be idle in the evening because you don't know which one will succeed this or that and paraphrase. So what better way to get an example other than Jesus Christ himself? And so a lot of people don't really take into consideration that Jesus Christ himself, according to the information shared to us in the gospel, he was a giftpreneur. He was the ultimate giftpreneur. And I'm about to break it down as to why. And so, as I mentioned, so ain't seed in the morning. Everybody gets up, goes somewhere, does something to contribute to, to a to contribute towards a, 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 a an, an end objective, whether it be to build something, grow something, or to deposit something into someone's life. And along the way, for your efforts, you're usually compensated. And so, not too many people really remember the fact that Jesus Christ Himself, He was supernaturally born through conception with the Holy Spirit, Mary. Okay, but yet, but then again, He had a natural father. And Joseph and Joseph was a carpenter. And so during that time frame, as you, you tend to have taken on the career path or the trade of your father. So you were simply trained and groomed to become whatever your father was currently doing. So in a, in a sense, to, to enter into the family business. And so Jesus, he had a day job. A lot of people don't know that he had a day job. And that I would imagine because of who he is, and I say is because he's still around, just not in body form, because of who he is and was at that time, I would imagine that when 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 Jesus Christ woke up and he put on his sandals and he went out or went wherever he went, he gave 100% of what he did. His objective was, I'm sure he took on contracts, he took on services, he built, you know, as a carpenter, he was responsible for a, wood, for a woodsmith, being a woodsmith. He, with his hands, he put things together. And so I'd imagine some of the creations that Jesus was able to formulate was probably well done, put it like that. I don't think, you know, he was human, but God in humanly formed. So definitely he had his days, I'm sure. He had his moments where he probably was frustrated, tired, didn't really feel like finishing the job, yada, yada, yada. But I would imagine that he probably went above and beyond on average. Now, here's a here's a good question that a lot of people may not talk about. And, and even your pastor may not even touch on this is the fact that Jesus was born into a situation where he his calling the his life's objective or his eventual life's work had nothing to do with carpentry, but it's good to say through utilizing his skills, his the skills he learned from his father, he became very good at what he did. And so it's good to say that Jesus Christ as a carpenter we received practice on the job as to how he was to utilize his unique gifting as a mate as a big part of the the, the overall puzzle well, so what i mean is his on the job training as a carpenter using his hands strategizing using his mind using math and everything needed to start a project and finish it was a was a was a was a life teaching life uh, crafting moment so from his job of getting up early going to the shop or going outside wherever wherever his office was, he gained the skills needed to assist him in what he would eventually become known as and what the world would know him as, as Redeemer. So ultimately, his day job was a carpenter as well as a rabbi. He was a studier of scripture. Of course, it, it, you know, we got references in the Bible where he was young at the, in a very young age. He was in the synagogue studying under scholars. So he was very knowledgeable in that regard. So he not only did he have a day job <laughs> as far as sometime throughout the day, he used his hands to create and to build something and assuming he received compensation for that. Just only natural. He, he worked, he built, he got compensated. He helped out the family or whatever he did with his funds, with his denarius. <laughs> and so, but beyond, beyond that, Jesus, I would imagine because his ultimate life's work was redeemer of mankind so it's good to say that he carved in the time also because the bible mentioned from a very young age he was in the synagogues and then there's a scripture where he refers to the fact he got lost and his parents found him 
and they were they found him in a synagogue. You know, I think his Bible refer, refers to the fact he was there for a whole day. They couldn't find him. And then his mom, imagine you lose your child, you get kind of upset. And her statement, of course, according to scripture, I'm paraphrasing is, you know, where, where have you been? We've been looking for you all day. And then his response is, didn't you know I'm about, I'm you know, something about I'm, I'm about my father's business. And so at a young age, he was about his father's business and his mind preparing himself for his life's work. And so ultimately, the giftpreneur concept is utilizing your day job in preparation for your life's work. And so once again, prior podcast explains that more. But Jesus had a day job is what I'm getting at. And so outside of that, he found the time to go to the synagogue, open up the text, open up the Old Testament, the Tanakh. I believe I'm saying that right the Torah in a a sense and he studied so he had his day job he made time for his life's work which was happened which happened to come through and, and and need additional instructions and all that other stuff so he went back to his life's manual i.e the Torah which today if we were to put ourselves in his shoes we get up we go to a job do we find time to get into the bible and, you know, of course, my favorite portion of that is the New Testament, which happens to be what we call the gospel, because that is the most important part of how we can get an example as to who Christ was and who we should strive to model after. And you don't have to become him. But if you do, if you try to, to emulate his behavior and his nature in in the, in the sense of just point oh one percent, you'll be better off than the other ninety nine point oh nine nine nine. But Jesus carved out time to get into the word, to get instructions so that he can fulfill his life's work. And so once again, land uh, the, the, the foundation of this podcast as to how we can use Jesus Christ as an example of a person who was the ultimate giftpreneur. And so according to scripture, let me get to let me let me get to something here. The last time. The last time that in the book of Mark is the last reference to Jesus Christ as being a carpenter. So of course his lifespan, according to what we're told is roughly 33, 34 years or whatever. And so he started carpentry work, obviously as a kid, because that's when his father, I'm assuming brought him in the shop, taught him the trade so that he could help with the family business more than likely. And so here on the screen, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see Mark six, three. And so this is the last reference. So I typed in carpenter, in the New Testament, this is the last time it's referenced in regards to Jesus himself. And it says, is not this the carpenter? They're referring to Jesus, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon and are not his sisters here with us. And they were offended at him. So referring to he just got done doing some mighty things and the people around were amazed that you know, Hey, we know this guy, ain't this the carpenter? (laughs) You know, what is a carpenter doing, doing these miracles, doing these works? What is, I mean, that I know this guy, this ain't, this ain't who I knew. This is not Jesus. This is not Jesus, the carpenter, the guy who made my couch. You know what I'm saying? That's that type of thing they were talking about. And so this is the last reference in scripture in the new Testament in particular that came up when I typed in carpenter, uh, referring to Jesus Christ himself. And so this is, that was his craft. That was his day job. That was where he got up in the morning and he was known for it because obviously whoever whoever's being quoted here knew him as the carpenter. And so I'm assuming every small town had their unique trades person. You got your coppersmith, you got your carpenter, you got your you got your farmers. Everybody in this agricultural age knew who was the town's whatever for whatever they needed. You go see you go see Joseph and his boy Jesus. If you need if you need something built for the home. And so, reason I bring this up is because this is just a reflection. This is just a sign that Jesus was known by everybody in his village, which of course scripture mentions that as it says, he couldn't do many works there. He couldn't do much work there. He couldn't do much of his life's work in his city. Because of this statement here, the people knew him as the carpenter and the Bible says that they were offended. And so it's once again, like somebody, you know, very well, because he's done work for you, probably gets up, leaves, 
does some things. You hear about, you know, you hear the name out in the streets that this guy is doing great things. And all of a sudden he comes back home and you're like, wow, this is the same guy that's out here raising the dead, giving sight to the blind. You know, this is come on. I, I know this guy. This is not him. But then again, it's like, OK, already they, the, the, the window of blessing, the window of opportunity was closed because of the fact they couldn't see beyond this man's day job. <laughs> they couldn't see beyond the fact that in order to take on the nature of man, you got to come into this world and do something similar to what man would do. And it happened to be getting up early, going to use your hands and becoming a carpenter while he was in training. Jesus was a carpenter in training. While he was in the synagogues preparing for his life's work. And so imagine, of course, we can't imagine because there wouldn't be no story. If Jesus all of a sudden felt that being a carpenter was all there was to the equation. If Jesus thought that being a carpenter was in an end and beginning, if that was his job was his beginning and his end, then there will be no story. I wouldn't be talking to you right now about this. Is this, a, this, this would not be a story 2000 years later, give or take worthy of your time. But because he didn't stop at just being a carpenter, he used his job as a part of his normal life process and to provide for his family, I would assume, and as technical training for what it would take to then enter into his business, which happens to be the redeemer of humanity. And so as I transition on, so I, I hope that from just what I've given you thus far, you can understand how Jesus just didn't stop with his day job. He was focused while as a child on his life's work. So, of course, Jesus, I'd imagine he got up, you know, he along that process, he did the typical pathway. He was educated. I would imagine he knew how to write, he knew math and stuff. I mean, just the basic stuff that you have to do. He knew all that stuff because I'm sure he had to implement math, especially in measuring stuff for his work, which happened to be a carpenter. And just on a side note, as a carpenter, during that time, it ain't that job didn't come with benefits. You had to earn your keep, set some aside and get back to work the next day. Whole different concept of carpentry work, because I'd imagine other carpenters from the time they took on their trade until the time they were not able to use their hands, period. They were carpenters. They didn't have no 401k or no pensions. But yet that's another story. <laughs> but anyway, so let's transition right on. And so you are now aware of the fact that Jesus had a day job. He went to school. He began preparing for his life's work well in advance of becoming who he was meant to become for humanity. His ultimate life's work was redeemer. And so what started this whole concept of, un, you know, of unboxing the ultimate gift, manure, which is Jesus Christ. It happened to come from this scripture right here. And if you're on YouTube, make sure you check this out. You can just see it. But if not, Go to your Bible itself. Go to your instruction manual. Matthew 4.23 is what this all started from today. So that's what this whole podcast was inspired by. The Lord put in my heart some things that I extracted that stood out to me. And so because it stood out to me, I'll share it with you. And, you know, hopefully it takes root and it does what it's meant to do. Matthew 4.23 from King James Version. And it says, and Jesus went about all Galilee. And so this is what really caught my attention, the descriptive nature of his of his life's work. I was about to say his job. So we know as a carpenter, he uses hands to build stuff. Now, when he transitioned into full time, uh, I, we, we would probably say today ministry. But yet I, I that's too religious for me. I would just say when Jesus received the full anointing and he knew it was time to get out into the world and, and work on his gift, work through his gift. The process was already, he was already ready for it. He had been preparing since he was a child to do the exact same thing that he was going, going to do the remainder of his life. And, you know, he had a short life, which was a part of the plan. So it's not like, you know, it's not one of them sad moments. He, he came, he learned, he groomed, he gave us an example. He, he overcame, he conquered. It was time to ride up out. So his life span, according to what we're told, is relatively short. But it was extremely effective. And so that lets me know that you don't have to have necessarily long life in order to get your life's work done, because ultimately it boils down to your life work. Whether you're a believer or not, ultimately is to accomplish something within God's kingdom. And I'm about to go into that a little bit deeper. So in this verse here, and Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues 
and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And so what really stood out to me is that and this is another great example is when Jesus started his life's work, he brought people along with him. We call them disciples. He knew their end goal. He knew their life's. He, he knew him being God. He knew their life's work, which would be to contribute to the big picture, which was the spreading of the gospel of the kingdom. And so he brought along some guys with him, taught them, trained them, re repeated the same process that he went through. They all, all the people who came along with him had a job. They had a day job prior to encountering uh, the the additional work or them being introduced to their life's work. They all had a job. They went through the same process he went through, whatever. So by the time they became uh, a part of the business, they were well trained and groomed. And so Jesus, as it says here, he taught and preached and healed. And so that was his life's work. Ultimately, it was all in design to open the doorway back for you open the doorway for humanity to enter back into that state of dominion and ultimately as the bible makes it very clear the reason of the reasons of as to why jesus did everything he did was not necessarily to not necessarily for us to be i want to, I want to make sure i say this correctly the end the final goal in jesus's work was to reestablish creation humankind mankind back to their rightful positions as inheritors of the kingdom of god so that is scripture for that i can point on that at a later date but ultimately your god's best for you is to receive your inheritance all the work that this that i'm talking about his life's work was for you to receive your inheritance and the bible makes it clear it's for us to inherit the kingdom of god which is an actual place in time and space as we, as we currently speak out of this realm is not in this realm but it is real as the words that are coming out of my mouth and that's about according to my faith so hopefully you can understand that but it is real it is it is real it is just as real it is just as real as the wi-fi signal that you see coming from your coming from your router in your house it's just as real as a signal as a 4g soon to be 5g signal that comes from a tower of which you may not even know you're getting reception from on your phone that's how real it is it does, you know you don't have to see it with your eye but you just have to believe that it's there and i believe you believe in wi-fi you believe in 4g coming to your cell phone so how crazy would it be to believe that there's another ram that we can't see anyway so to extrapolate here um when jesus got into his life's work he entered into that gift manure phase because you can't run on. You can't have a team of individuals all out to accomplish the same goal without there being some type of business structured format process that you teach that other people duplicate. And so this is a great analogy. This is a great time. Uh, once again, I think episode one where I laid out a visual aid as to you go to the left for the typical pathway education your job retire you die you go to the right you get into your word you get connected with the holy spirit he gives you instructions from the father from the throne itself then you are given some revelation as to who what how you're what sport you're supposed to do and then you get to work and then once your work is done by the time your work is done the way the way that the lord does things he always leaves fruit every example of every person in the bible that were in their life's work according to what god designed for them always left something behind and the primary thing we know they left behind is the fact their name is being mentioned in our life's manual aka the bible thousands of years after the fact which lets me know that they were quite effective at their life's work because if, if they weren't they wouldn't be in the book and so just their name and their lifestyle whatever it is they contributed to the book lets us know that their life's work was effective and that's just a little side note anyway so here we are jesus is now transitioning to his life's work he is now a full-fledged giftpreneur he's using his gift what was his gift his gift initially was as he said he's about his father's business when he was a child he was preparing all along for his role as a redeemer and here's the, the job descriptions that we're given as to how he accomplished what he accomplished in this life. And so it, I like how it says Jesus went about all Galilee. So Jesus, once again, he got up in the morning when he was a carpenter full time. 
and he went to build stuff with his hands. And now it says here, Jesus went about all Galilee. So Jesus got up, put his sandals on. We don't really know if he's still engaged in carpentry work, but it's good to say he did not. Eventually, he transitioned beyond his day job and he got into his life's work because it says here he got up and went about all Galilee, which means that if you all in the city, you don't have time to be in the shop using your hands. So it's good to say Jesus was on foot in neighborhoods in Galilee because he was, as it says here, about all Galilee. So he went. He just wasn't local. This guy was moving. And what was he doing when he was moving? He was doing his life's work. He was doing what he was put here to do. And what makes it so unique is the fact that scripture gives us so many examples of uh, as to how it was received, how his life work was received was remarkable. They use words such as who is such guy that does does great things? How did he have so, so much power and wisdom? And so just that's just a, that was the buzz going throughout the neighborhood as to how effective he was with his life's work. And so once again, to, to me personally, this is all an example of what I would imagine I could be going a little bit far here, but I imagine God has something of this magnitude for you because I believe this for myself. And so it says here, what was he doing when he was out in the streets? He was teaching in their synagogues, which means remember he started in he started in synagogues, according to scripture, when he was I think the Bible says when he was 13 or around that age. So he'd been in the synagogues now 20 years, give or take. So he was well versed. And his subject matter, he'd been studying for a couple years now, so it gives him authority, and they called him rabbi, which means that they acknowledge the fact he, he wasn't an ordained minister. He was just a guy who spent his whole life studying, which gave him wisdom outside of his peers to where they looked at this guy like, wow, rabbi, teacher. Like, you know, he's, he's, he's certified because of the time put in. All, all in, all in steps towards his life's work. So it's one of the things where as a parent, if you, you know, my job as a parent is what I'm really asking God for now is to help me sniff out my kids gifts so that I can help establish them at an early age so that they can be about their father's business. But that's a whole nother subject, man. We'll get into that in another episode, but teaching in their synagogue. So he was well versed in the word. So he knew what he was teaching. And because ultimately he was the word, so it makes it easy when you are the when you are the subject matter, then it makes it easy just to talk about yourself in a sense. And then it says the next thing he did was preaching, proclaiming, proclaiming. So preaching, we look at preaching as like, oh man, when you think about preachers, if you're not if you're not in the spiritual realm yourself, or you look at it as being religious, you say preachers. You you put them in a separate category of like, man, they're that's a certified job for that person there. It has nothing to do with me. I'm not ordained. I'm not all that special stuff. But yet, once again, from this example here, there was no going to school, Bible school, going this and that. You just, you get in your word, you get instruction from the spirit. You are certified. So here he was preaching, proclaiming. He was simply wherever he went, he acknowledged a particular message, which is what I'm excited to really get into in the, in the future. The good news of the kingdom. And so here in modern day and time, we got preachers that I don't doubt are anointed and under they, they work for the Lord. So they work for the kingdom. I, I leave it at that. But yet, if we were to use Christ's life as an example, it gives us clear instructions as to what, how, when, where he did what he did. He taught in the synagogue, which means he opened the books. So that's basically us opening the Bible and basically giving some information that people didn't know before about a certain subject matter. And so, for example, right now I, on, the, on the screen, I have Matthew 4, 23 up. So basically I am teaching from the book so i have a book in front of me so on a computer screen but you get the drift so in a sense i am teaching right now because i'm laying out something about being jesus being a carpenter which most people may have not taken in consideration and now the preaching aspect simply proclaiming you're announcing something typically and you know you're proclaiming something you're either one-on-one -on -one in front of a group of people or in front of a mass large audience we all know that jesus was in front of a large amount of audiences throughout his ministry according to what we we're told here so he had his one-on-one -on -one sessions where he was simply just giving information to somebody directly because he, he had a small team as a part of his business remember the dust the 12 disciples that was his that was his 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 crew he brought those guys everywhere he went he brought his partners with him because he was teaching them on the job and so 
as a part of being a disciple, a follower of. So they emulated Christ's life because he laid out an example of what they were to become. So all of them had day jobs. They left their day job to go into their life's work. And the thing is, they had no clue that apart from uh, apart from meeting a particular individual, that they would shift gears by leaving their day jobs and pursuing their life's work. And I would imagine we'll never know, but I'm more than confident in saying that because once again, they were very effective with their job. Why is that? Because their names is forever sketched into the documentation that is now 2000 plus years old, that they were effective with their job. They all served a purpose towards a grand plan that they were effective, that they, if they were to look back at the end of their lives, they wouldn't have, they would have said that they didn't, they didn't have any regrets having left their day job for their life's work. Because it's good to say, as Bible makes it very clear in regards to, I think it was, uh, I think it was Peter who met, mentioned, Lord, we left everything. We left our businesses, my house, my wife, my kids for you in the sake of the gospel. And then Jesus responded by saying, no man has left his house, mother, house, cars, business, whatever, and won't receive. I think he said something like tenfold in this life and in the next. So God, Jesus was basically saying, you didn't lose anything. You just you just 10 X. You just 10 X your life. You don't even know it. So it's good to say while they were in their life's work, business back at home was probably booming. But anyway, that's another thing. So anyway, I'm going to keep this moving. Um, And so, yeah, the characteristics of what Christ's life work boiled down to this. We know the end result. He became the redeemer of mankind. He opened up the gateway back to access the father directly to receive an, a down payment in the form of the Holy Spirit, which if you're a believer in Christ, is that, it's just that simple. By faith, you can receive a gift that can give you instruction on the dime and it can help you transition into your life's work from your job. And not saying a job is bad because you, as you, we can see here, a job is a part of the training process, but it doesn't stop there. And so teaching, and preaching, simply preaching the gospel, claiming. But what he what he preached was extremely important because that's what we were told to do. I think it's Mark nine one, if I'm not mistaken. It talks about. G, uh, let me let me just make sure this is official. Oh, as I'm speaking, I will type this in so that I know that I can be correct with this. Uh, we see them, Michelle. Okay, okay. Mark nine two. Let me see. Let's see if it's Mark nine. Oh, that's wrong, Mark. So anyway, um, Jesus was sp speaking specifically about a certain topic matter. And that's where I think it really plays into the big puzzle. The puzzle is about this sub subject matter. And it says here he was preaching the gospel, the good news of the kingdom, the kingdom, the, that word kingdom. <sighs> just, just to be honest with you. When it was introduced to me over a decade ago, I then at that point realized the importance of that subject matter for myself. And that's when I began to man, like, man, it has to be something greater than just what I'm experiencing in this world. And then the words kingdom has been a part of my vocabulary heavily, not on a daily basis, but more often than not for quite some time now. And I believe this gift or concept is my way of entering my life's work of encouraging others to also consider the concept of taking time to learn through the scripture, the importance of you yourself being able and being willing to share your excitement. If you're a believer for the kingdom, because that's your inheritance. If you know, you're going to inherit something down the line, all life, all, everything you do for the most part is preparation to then receive that, item that you're expecting to to inherit and as, as a believer in christ we are called to inherit the kingdom so that mean what does that what does that mean okay the kingdom of god is an actual territory in the in another realm that we can't see but it has all the components of a real country so it has a law it has economy it has all the things that we have now it has within there just because you look at prior kingdoms, the kingdom of in England and spare in Spain, all those kingdoms from yesteryears, those characteristics was during the same time frame as this word as the words we're hearing was 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 given during Caesar's reign. The Roman Empire was the 
the the dominant kingdom. So you look at all the structures of that. They had law. They had law, they had economy. They had all that stuff. Everything. What's 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 unique is the fact that in a kingdom, it's the king's domain. When you put those two words together, it's owned by a single entity, and the domain is the territory. So you need territory in order to be a king. So Jesus is basically saying you are going to inherit your kingdom. And so that's one of the best parts about the Bible. It says we're joint heirs with the Lord. So we are, in a sense, on even ground when it comes to what when we enter the spirit realm, where our position will be. Therefore, we're going to inherit all the things that God himself has right now. And if he's the owner of everything visible and invisible, that means that we are we should be experiencing the abundance of life that the word promises us right now in the natural realm. And so it, it, it doesn't make us immune to natural world experiences, but it gives us an upper hand because we have dual citizenship in a sense. We're born into this world, but we're not of this world. Scripture makes it clear that I am, you know, it says, I think, be uh, be not conformed to the ways of this world. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. But anyway, I'm getting off track. Let me bring this to conclusion. Jesus lived his life as a carpenter, as his day job. He left the workforce eventually because he had to go into his life's work. Here we have the instructions as to how he accomplished what he did. He taught in the synagogues throughout the land. He sent his team or his business partners out and about to also spread what the gospel of the kingdom, that a core message of what we are worth to inherit and all the attributes of it is what it comprises of the kingdom. And then he backed all this talk up by it says and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. So not only did he teach, he laid a foundation for people to understand because he was giving them information they didn't know. So at that moment, they he in teaching them, a light bulb came on more than likely. Then it made it easier for them to receive what he was about to preach, which was the fact that, hey, as of right now, and, 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 and it says when Jesus began to preach, his very first statement was repent, which means turn away, change the way you think. Why? Because the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is here. And so after people receive the, the basic foundations of saying that this guy is not normal, he's doing something and talking something a little bit different. Then he's going to say he's going to make this bold statement that, hey, another government is here. Another kingdom is here. Kingdom is a government. Another government is here. But then he didn't stop right there. You know why? Because he backed it up. And so at that moment, there was a there was a revival. Nowhere, everywhere he's taught and then preached, there was a revival. People got excited. You know, people were, were lives were changed on the spot. And then he sealed the deal by extending his hand and, and demonstrating in power. It's, the Bible said the word of the, the kingdom of God is not in word and deed, but in power. A word in word, but power. Sorry. And so the healing, teaching, preaching, healing are the job descriptions that Jesus demonstrated during his life's work, which allowed him to be effective in his life. And he sealed the deal by doing the miraculous, which from the from from the from the home country standpoint, from the kingdom standpoint, it's simply, you know, just uh a natural occurrence of taking something that's not taking something that's distorted in the form of an illness, sickness, healing, whatever, and just getting it back in alignment with what it should be, which is wholeness. So anyway, I'm about to bring it down to the whole front. But Jesus had a day job. He had a life's work. His night job was to get out in the streets and to teach, preach, and heal. And then the business side, the entrepreneurship is simply the fact that he wasn't alone. He incorporated other people into his life's work and they all contributed according to their purpose in life. And then they were quite effective. And the reason why we know they were effective, because once he retired, <laughs> not, you know, you know, get what I'm saying. Once he left this realm because his work was done, his team carried on the process and they grew thousands upon thousands daily. Like he, you know, not only did he probably 10 X their day job businesses back home, their families prospered, everything was good on the home front, which allowed those gentlemen to continue their life's work. And they went out and 10 X the team, the team and the team is the body of Christ, the church, the ecclesia. So if that been the case, I want to wrap it up. Um, but yet hopefully I laid down something as to the ultimate giftpreneur because everything that was revealed to me, I just share it with you. And so once again, if you enjoyed this, share this 
podcast. Share wherever you're hearing this or watching this. Share this. Because once again, this is not meant to be preachy. This is just meant to give you some foundational things that can help you enter into your life's work the same way I'm on this journey to do the same for myself. Because it's been revealed to me that there has to be something greater than my day job, in a sense. And so, other than that, give it a thumbs up. Give this some reviews if you listen to this on a podcast format. And look forward to giving more revelation as things come to me through the Holy Spirit. So once again, stay prayed up, stay blessed. And remember... Your gift will make room for you. So definitely be open and receptive to what the spirit gives to you. Connect with your creator and let's make this life effective. Other than that, I'll see you guys later on the next episode. Enjoy your day.